Is it back there? Oh, I see it. <clears throat> I mean, we're recording. So, like, literally, <clears throat> there's mice back here. <laughs> like, that's, this is where comedians came. Behind me is where comedians came to perform for many months. A grill, mice, and dog shit behind me. So how I heard about the PB Backyard Comedy Show is from a, a mutual friend of ours. And he said, hey, these dudes are putting on a show in their backyard. Do you want to do it? And I was like, yeah, like just, just anything at this point. Uh, certainly my standards for the shows I would, I would do and the shows I wouldn't do, all that's gone. It's like just, just an excuse to be out of the house, tell some jokes in front of people, whether there's an audience or not, or if it's just comics, just, just anything. And these guys put on a show at their house and there was like, a, like an actual crowd. And it was like so, like I guess it didn't occur to me like how weird that was. They like let people off of Instagram in their own home. <laughs> like it's certainly not a risk most people are willing to take, but they did it and I'm glad that they did. And the whole, the whole idea behind doing a show in the backyard was we were just dying for stage time. Um, again, it, this was something that was ripped from us. So we were like, all right, well, we could do a show in our backyard and just do a show for our friends. Um, we'd met a few comedians through the open mics, so we reached out to them. And it was, I mean, within two weeks, we had basically reached out and DM'd a couple of the comedians that we had met at the Beachcomber, we'd send a note out to, uh, to Josh Nelson, and we're like, hey, we're gonna pilot this idea, which is doing comedy in a backyard. And there was, there's no stage time at that time, and there hadn't been anything for three months, so they were instantly saying yes. Normally, I'd be like, there's no way I'm doing a show in the backyard. Like, I'm sorry, uh, for free, absolutely no way. But, I mean, during COVID, you didn't, you didn't, I didn't even see people. So I was so excited to do a show. I honestly had no idea what to expect. I thought maybe it was just gonna be like, Phil, Chris, me, and like two people. Like, I also thought it might've been like a lie and just like a way to get me to come over or something. I, I mean, you can't tell, I did not trust these guys for a long time. <laughs> okay, I mean, we're in the backyard. I mean, it, this is about to be fun. All right, all right, let's just do it. And then the audience was just our friends. We just were able to have enough friends there that actually created a, a big enough audience for real laughs. Um, and we had our first show. Let's give it up for Backyard Comedy! All right, so the night of the first show, I think the simplest way to put it is that there was absolutely magic in the air. I'm not gonna lie, I was like, okay, this is, I was like, okay, this, 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 this might be something. This is nice, come on, y'all make some noise for Chris and Phil, come on. This is this shit look like Dilla Dilla Island, don't it? <laughs> I had no idea what to expect. I was blown away when they had kind of a stage and a microphone and people. Like, I was so impressed. Um, just because, honestly, most of my experience had been open mics, you know, except for my one show that I had. So to have people in the crowd listening to you was huge. There's been a lot going on. Um, I know a lot of things like the front of our minds lately, so I just want to address it at the top. Um, I got bangs. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was amazing. It was so much fun. You mean I get to wear my Adidas sweatsuit all day long and not go fucking anywhere? <laughs> like, I'm literally going to do Zoom birthday parties for the rest of my life. It felt so good to be on stage again. It, it felt like COVID wasn't a thing. It felt like the pandemic wasn't happening. Perhaps it was because we all had been kind of deprived of this thing that we loved for, for many months. But it was fun and everyone did great. I remember that's that's the night that uh, Chris and I started our tradition. After every show we, we turned to each other and we were like, ah, that's comedy baby. But that's kind of the feeling is that it's like, man, we did it. Like we, we, we entertained this group of people. It was really good. And then I also was like, we could do shows. Like, why don't we figure out ways to produce shows? And in my mind, I was just like, we'll just do backyard shows. We'll do any kind of shows where people will come to. 
it kind of got like an idea of like underground comedy maybe is going to be a thing because we, you just we didn't know what was going to happen. And I remember sitting with everyone at the end of the show and we're looking around and there, and there was this kind of, everyone had this like look in their eye. They're all kind of nodding and we we're like, something happened here tonight and we're going to do this again. We do the second show inside the backyard and the crowd get a little bigger. So I'm like, all right. And this is, after the show, this is when I'm telling Chris and Phil, I'm like, yo, listen. I don't know if y'all know, but this thing is about to be big. Like, people couldn't stop talking about it. How we're sitting up under the sky. You know, like, how we're just sitting there, like, drinking and, like, passing each other uh, jokes and writing, writing stuff writing stuff with each other, getting to know one another. That's when I knew, that's when I was like, yo, this is, this is gonna be big, like, this is gonna be big. And, the, and the, the number one thing when I really knew it was gonna blow was, was because it wasn't forced. It just happened. For real, on, on a serious note, y'all make some noise for Phil and Chris, man. They got something good going on. I, I mean, I definitely didn't think it was gonna be what it is today. So that was, I don't even know what I thought it was gonna be. I just thought we were gonna start doing comedy in our backyard. and. Have fun with it. It was like a cool hobby. We got a lot of new faces in the crowd. Who here has not been? Holy shit. Oh, Woo! Wow. As many things happen in life, we just kind of let momentum take us, right? And, and we're trying to do things the right way. So we're like, all right, well, let's set up an Instagram account and, you know, let's start recording the shows. Each show you, I would go back to, it was just so impressive. Like, they just got more chairs. We have more safety precautions in order. Okay, now we have a sign. I was like, now we have merch. Like, each step just made it more real. I see. Yeah, Something's happening here. We got our first sponsor. That's right. We got labels here. We're moving up in the world. <laughs> Let's give it up for Taco Chico, everyone. <laughs> Taco Chico! <laughs> it, was, it was always like learning from the last show and kind of building on it. The Instagram story will say, hey, you love? No. Love People in the back can't hear. And figuring out, okay, well, this is where it's easier to do this, and this is how we need to have the lineup set, and okay, now we need these comedians. So the other comedians in San Diego, once TV Backyard Comedy started getting a little more traction, um, I mean, nothing else was happening too, so they were they were able to book like the top comics in San Diego. And by book, I mean the top comics in San Diego were just showing up because they were excited to have a place to do comedy. There's people from LA that start reaching out to us directly, and they're like, hey, can I drive an hour and a half to come perform in your backyard next to the grill? To just kind of put into perspective like what the shutdown did to comedy, uh, a guy considered a mentor of mine, uh, Zoltan Kazis, he, do he does it full time, has made a lot of money doing stand up, also decided to show up to just some backyard to tell jokes, and he was in shorts. <laughs> like, we, we didn't know, it was like, okay, is this legit? Is this an open mic? Is this, like, just his friends? This is what I used to do all the time for a living, and now it's like this. This is good. I'm gonna send a picture of this to my landlord for next month's rent. I mean, like, it's not happening. Uh, but then we kind of realized, like, oh, they go on Instagram and they have people DM them for a spot in their yard. As you can see, we can only fit so many people back here. So next show, make sure that you guys respond quick. We actually turned down a lot of people for tonight's show. There's a lot of people that messaged us wanting to come out. Um, and we had to say no to them because we just can't fit them. With the Instagram, we, we start trying to get followers so that we can have more of an audience because we want to expand outside of our friends. And we know that people are dying for live entertainment. Like they, they, they want, they want to do something. They need a break. You know, it's, it's this quarantine is straining on them. After momentum picks up and, you know, the community starts finding out about it and they're asking to come to shows and we're realiz realizing, like, we don't have enough room for this. But, you know, like, what, what, shit, how do we, like, how do we get a handle on it? Because it felt like it was just getting, things were just going kind of crazy in a lot of directions. I'd also, I just want to start by reminding everyone that none of us know what we're doing. So you are in a backyard watching people attempt stand-up comedy. You know, it's, it's kind of what's going on here. Um, 
So we reach out to Josh Nelson and we're like, can we take you to dinner, man, to just talk to you about how to properly run a show? Because what starts to happen is Phil and I are these aspiring stand-up comedians, but we're kind of transitioning to become producers. We're show producers now. And we sit with Josh, we take him out to a nice dinner with some spaghetti and some wine, and we're talking to him. And the lesson that he gave us is he looked us both in the eyes and he goes, I said, the keys to running a good show is one, you always have quality comics. You put up the best comics that you think um, there's are around. You don't put up any favors. You just put up comics that are funny. And then the second thing that I told him is, this is what's the most important to me because I'm a comic, is you always take care of the comics. And that means is you gotta do a show and you gotta make the comic feel as comfortable as possible. And the way you do that is by putting on the best show possible and you don't let people heckle. You don't, you just make it comfortable and as easy as possible for them. And then I also said, and if you can take care of them and give them a little bit of money, that's always a good thing. Because even if a comic goes somewhere and they get 20 bucks, they're pumped just to get a little bit of money because there's not a lot of money in this whole thing. So the basically, I would say rule one is just always take care of the comics on the show as much as you can. So we really took that to heart and we wanted to make sure that if we had the ability to in this time where these comedians are not getting paid gigs and they, they can't get stage time, perhaps this is an opportunity for us to get them some some compensation for their art with that being said uh we are trying to expand and there's some things that we're purchasing to make this better uh, chris and i just do this out of our own pocket so if you guys want to make any tips donations we are accepting them all right that's all just going to go straight back to the show chris and i aren't taking any of it and then once we get going we're going to throw that back at the comedians so we we start doing that and it, it now it becomes from what was a free show that we were doing to just bring laughter and joy to to the community now it's kind of becoming a, like a business of sorts so things are progressing right and we're growing in popularity we're, we're slowly tracking the couple hundred followers that we have and what started with like 10 followers now we got a couple hundred so we're real proud of that we're like all right this is great but Phil comes up to me and he's like, this like boxer UFC fighter butt dialed me through Instagram, which I didn't even know was possible. I didn't know who she was, um, but that's what ultimately leads to uh, the big show, our first big show um, that really, you know, made PB Becker comedy and like got us to where we're at. Um, I mean, that was, that was the catalyst of like, okay, we can do this, like this is, here we go. Like, let's see what this turns into. And, and it just starts like this wild roller coaster that Chris and I keep looking at each other and we're like, what's going on? Like, why is this happening? 